Welcome. Hello. Thank you so much for tapping in, turning on, tuning in with I, Enchantress the Fabulous, here on our evolutionary, revolutionary rise of a high that is happening at this time. So welcome to another wonderful YouTube video here on my channel, Enchantress the Fabulous, right? Bringing it to you raw. <laughs> right um this video is going to be centered not solely but we are going to talk about it um the upcoming frost full moon in gemini and all its spiritual significance right especially in astrology take with it as you will i am not um your traditional astrologer i don't even consider myself to be a professional astrologist but I am a lifetime astrology lover, I feel. So I just want to make that clear. I'm more of an intuitive astrologist. If if that is a thing, I don't even know. I just, um, I, I flow with the divine and how I'm energetically, intuitively led every single time. Um, astrology has been a fascination of mine since I was a small, young child early elementary school years I am way older now and it's never left me it's only grown and so I don't speak it um, matter-of-factly in the way that maybe professional or traditional um, astrologists um, speak it so if you're looking for that type of preciseness and um, textbook astrology I am not the channel for you okay I am a divine channel a conduit a messenger an oracle a muse you know amongst many other things and so i deliver how i intu intuitively feel and how i'm intuitively led and so um, with that being said um if you find yourself here believe that there's something in here for you um although we might be speaking about a specific time frame in astrology know that these messages are timeless so whenever you do find yourself here and you're following your divinity then know that this is not a mistake that you didn't stumble upon here by coincidence you know what i mean so either way um it's very interesting i'll talk about this card i was shuffling you know and everything i wasn't meaning to flip out a card and I kept seeing this card in my shuffle. And then as I was shuffling, it flew out. And I was like, okay, okay. And it's very interesting because I did dream with bears last night. And so I just find it so intriguing that it's going to come out. Um, and it came out while I was shuffling here. And so I feel like I'm supposed to articulate on that dream a little bit. Not so much give you my whole dream sequence and all this kind of stuff. But just a snippet of a portion of one of my dreams um, that included the bear last night um, and all its significance too, because bears are known like, you know, in, in spiritual reference to courage, protection, divine protection too. So it's just very interesting. Um, I am my own kind of animal whisperer. I work with the animal kingdom. So definitely check out my new playlist of um, spirit animal enchantments i hope that you would enjoy that as well um, because it is a segment dedicated to our spirit animal mystical friends whether they are real animals mystical animals ancient animals just my own personal journey through the spirit animal kingdom and my connection with them um, has led me to do a segment dedicated to our spirit animal friends. So I posted uh, my first video to that segment, which is discussing the raven. And so definitely if you are into spirit, spirit animal communication and you feel intuitively called to, to divine with the animal kingdom, then maybe this channel is definitely for you. But either way, um, we're gonna dive in um, we'll speak some about the full moon in Gemini, which is also called the frost moon. Um, 
right? Because as the moon reaches its fullest potential um, under the sign of Gemini, it illuminates for us our path and offers us valuable insights into ourselves and the world around us. And so we're going to talk about that, right? Because Gemini, right, um, is associated with curiosity. You have to, if, if, if you wanted to know a simplified way to look at what's the full moon in, what's the new moon in, whatever the new moon is going to be, the full moon before it is going to be its polar opposite sign, okay? So um, for some, I, 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 I wonder if in Vedic astrology, I didn't check, um, but I wonder if the, if the full moon is in Taurus because Scorpio polar opposite is it Taurus I believe and because we're still kind of in Scorpio season in Vedic astrology even though we entered Sagittarius in Western astrology I know don't get confused by all my terminologies and stuff like that understand that I use it all um you know so we might be in Western astrology which is the more popular one I find, um, it's Sagittarius season, but in Vedic astrology, it's still Scorpio, you know? So, like, I, I happen to fall under the category of that, too, right? Because in Western astrology, I would be a Sagittarius, but in Vedic, I'm a Scorpio, right? So, um, so I wonder if this full moon is being viewed as Taurus. Interesting. But either way, um, we're going to talk about it in the Geminian ex um, expression, right? Because that's where I feel it being channeled through at this time, right? So, um, which is the polar opposite of Sagittarius. So that's just a quick little side note. If you wanted to know um, the full moon before the new moon, just look at the new moon's polar opposite sign. <laughs> I hope that makes sense to you and maybe will help you without having to look it up you would naturally know it you know what I mean um either way Gemini the sign of Gemini is associated with curiosity right mercury energy communication and it's all about adaptability right it, rep it represents our intellectual capacity right it's all about versatility and our ability to see multiple sides of any situation, every situation, right? Um, so with the frost full moon, right, falling under the sign, right, because it's the introduction, right, to um, frostiness. <laughs> hey, you're the sun. Frosty, the snowman. <laughs> but like, it's just, it's like we get a taste of the cold, right? And I find that interesting too, because when I think about it now, um, and I think about the dynamics of um, where many of us might be, or some of us might be, or where we need to be in terms of, you know, our own spiritual empowerment, right? Um, and our ability to turn frosty in some kind of degree, especially when it comes to discerning and also um really establishing our boundaries and sometimes it'll take a cooler perspective a colder stance right um to be able to deliver that boundary that leads and and further empowers our abundance factor because when we set into motion that which we need to right Sometimes it's going to take us to be a little bit cold about something, especially if we're warm about a lot of things. It's interesting, too, because my daughter, too, my daughter, like, you know, especially with my own healing of my people-pleasing tendencies or just my kindness, because my kindness is not so much about people-pleasing tendencies. Maybe you can relate, but I'm just naturally kind, and I love to do things for people, right? And And if I love you, whether you deserve it or not, I just love to make people feel good. And that has cost me plenty, right? That has cost me 
um, where my boundaries didn't exist and it, it created in, in this, this level that was imbalanced in my own life. So she courageously, right, with her Geminian characteristics, because I told you that my daughter and I are polar opposite one another in both Western and Vedic astrology, right? So in Sagittarius, she's a Gemini. In Vedic astrology, I'm a Scorpio, she's a Taurus. There you go, it is in Taurus, so there you go. <laughs> it's all making sense. We're also pre-shadow. I always get it confused, pre or post shadow because mercury retrograde is also blooming near so you know that's also um going down like in a way that um we might be feeling that uh, i'll probably do a video on that too um but either way um so um what was i saying Right, so she says, right, um, the next time you think about, like, being nice or doing something, tell me first, and I'll tell you if you should do it, <laughs> right? Gemini tend to be a little bit bossy, right? They can be bossy, or they appear bossy when giving orders or just talking. It's not really so much. It's just their mercurial energy leading, directing in the way that they should, right? Because they're able to be versatile, to the ability to see multiple sides of a situation, right? So it was interesting because the other day I was talking about doing something for someone, right? Um, Because it was just my thoughtfulness because I'm very thoughtful, right? I, I consider that maybe my Piscean nature because I have a moon in Pisces too and stuff like that. And I tend in Virgo, my Virgo traits, Pisces, and who are also polar opposites, right? Pisces, Virgo, is it Pisces Virgo? Yeah, Pisces Virgo energy, which I have innate in me, <laughs> right? Um, it's very thoughtful, right? Um, very so I'm I have a very thoughtful nature, so I think of a lot of things that I can do for someone, you know, and that tends to be the way that I am. And so, um, you know, this is Thanksgiving season. Uh, you know, we, we meet with family, our chosen family or our family, friends, whatever, friend, friends, think, friends giving, whatever you do or if not, you do nothing. Like, trust me, I tried to get out of mine. <laughs> I it didn't, I, I tried, I tried and my uncle did not allow that. <laughs> and, you know, I just took it and I, I took it as a sign that, you know, I just zen before I meet with any of them. You know what I mean? So, um, so anyway, um, hey, 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 Ebony, don't do that, right? And so I thought about bringing something that I have made, right, that someone can enjoy, um, because the ingredients and stuff like that suited their character and their lifestyle right and I was like oh I could bring this but I had a coming to Jesus moment and right? in, in my own revelation I was like nah fuck that no <laughs> stop it this person's not even like in your life they don't support they don't like they, they talk about you like if they could throw you under the bus they would like you know what I mean and 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 I'm like, why? Why am I thinking and being thoughtful? Like, and I'm like, no, like, fuck that. Like, no, right? So I shared this with my daughter. But before I got to say what, that I came to terms with, no, I'm not going to do that. She was like, no. <laughs> like, no. You, why? Like, mom. And I'm like, no, let me finish. I'm not. But I just want to share with you my own personal evolutionary growth, right? That I I had this moment where I did think about it and it almost went through. And then my boundaries and my own evolution of caring for my own kingdom, right? 
and that's why I feel like I don't need to like babble uh, about me but I'm just you know you apply it wherever it is for you you know what I'm saying um because you know like we're all each on our journey mastering the self part of our journey and that comes from unraveling certain characteristics and behaviorisms that um, we sometimes have to really um, pick apart because it has been damaging for ourselves um, throughout the years or self-sabotaging in many kind of ways. And so we have to catch ourselves. It's like it's easier to fall back into Ebony, Ebony, hey. Hey, Ed. it's easiest, right, to fall back into the pattern that is our comfort zone in many kind of ways because we're comfortable there, we're used to being there. And so our consciousness that is aware and awakened, we're finer tuning. And so we have to do these things and we have to be able to um, connect with others that can help us have that account accountability like for ourselves, right? To have that leveling of support. And I know that it might be a, a mountain climb, right? To get to that space of even having one person that is a true genuine person in our lives, um, having to have to, you know, um, slay so many devils and demons along the way that did not serve our evolution best you know what I'm saying so either way um we might be there I just feel like with this frost energy right this frost energy I feel like so the purpose of the point of, that I was trying to make was that although I am warm I'm thoughtful I'm kind right discernment is absolutely necessary for us on our path right and it might involve us having to be frosty cold to some degree in order to establish that leveling of level up in our own evolution you know what i mean so we're being called right with the frost full moon right falling under this sign we're being called to embrace these type of energy and to tap into our transformative power, right? And so with the frost, the full moon, it signifies a time of transition. Transition, oh my gosh, <laughs> I didn't say these words. Transition and reflection. Transition and reflection, right? Because the seasons are changing. And and nature, right? We see it in the weather changing, unless you live somewhere that the weather doesn't change, you know what I'm saying? But overall, like if you live where there's a place in an in a area that the seasons change, some of us are preparing for the arrival of winter. Oh, 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 oh. Ah, sorry, <laughs> it's very late. And it's been, it's been a busy ride, right? So we're preparing for the arrival of winter, whether it's physically happen, ha happen, happening in your land, or we can look at this metaphorically, so to speak, right? This is a lunar phase, right? That we get to assess our own lives and make necessary adjustments, right? And if we need to turn the frost meter on, and it is wisest to do it doesn't take away from the kind that is you or that your your nature is just learning to to um really um where do you put this energy of yours where to whom and why so you might even start putting this more into yourself right and and it might appear selfish but it's not it's it, it's it's so you might be studying more right this is intellectual pursuit this is evolutionary pursuit this could be completing tasks that 
you that's taking you some time to complete right this could be studying like ferociously um you know getting degrees getting um like you know certificates like getting licenses <laughs> getting, without, getting licenses getting you know your shit your all your ducks lined up in a row right and 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 maybe being frosty in some degree in the process right because the seasons change right and and you're like I always say I'm a mood within a moon cycle <laughs> right there's a lot of the water and fire in me um that you know um that's tapping into the air quality within my own infinite being too right and and the moon right this moon right especially in this Gemini and um the galactic season right it brings a sense of clarity and sharpness to our thoughts right allowing us to perceive things with a fresh perspective which i'm going to talk about my dream now i feel like i should right so and part of that i'm just going to give a snippet because this was a long dream sequence but in one of the dream sequences right um, we're out in like this road and this bear appears out of nowhere. And uh, I'm not gonna give the detail as to who, but this person was in my dream whom I actually have not seen in quite a few years. But at one point in my life, this person and I were very close, right? We were very close. And this person was in my dream, right? And when they saw the bear, mind you, when we saw the bear, the bear was on all fours, similar to this, without its mouth, without its mouth open though, on all fours, right? So, but it was a black bear. And in my dream, that was very significant because I was kind of like communicating with the animal um, telepathically. And so I, 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 I wasn't afraid. And so this was like kind of like a lucid moment in my dream sequence where I was very cognitive, I was very conscious about the dynamics of um, what was happening here. There was like three other people around, right? I don't know who these people are. I can't remember that, see, that part of the dream, but the person that used to be a part of my life freaked the fuck out. And in the dream, I'm trying to hold um, contact with this black bear, right? I'm holding contact with this black bear and I'm like, stay calm, right? Because she freaked out, right? And she started running towards it like a lunatic though, right? But like afraid. And, and so I'm like, I'm like not locking eyes with the bear but I'm locking soul with the bear. It was just very intriguing. And then I felt it. I said, ah, its baby is nearby. And so when I looked, then I saw the baby bear and that's where she was running off into it. So, um, so like kind of like, what I got from that type of dynamic because I woke up and I was later on like and I was thinking about this and I wrote all my dreams in my dream journal I hope that you too have a dream journal even if you don't dream and we dream every every night whether you remember them or not um just make it a habit to sleep with a book and a pen or paper and pen for me, when I started dream journaling, I was young. Um, I was about in junior high school, and it was a suggestion of my dad because he got tired of me waking him up at night. <laughs> so um, I have always had wild dreams, very vivid, very prem premonition like. Um, you know, uh, my mediumship too began um, when I was nine. At, well, the where I can. My journey has been a self-reflective one 
And so I never called it these things. And it's now with knowledge and, and learning and education and just constant experience where you can tie things together. My very first vivid, um, actually no, but where I'm gonna just talk about this one because there was another one I had with my great grandparents and I didn't know these people and I'd seen them. And it took me going through a photo album with my grandfather and I was like, who are these people? Who are, I see them because I saw them floating over a bed, right? And he's like, that's my my mother and my father. Like, and mind you, I never met them. They weren't alive when I was born, right? Um, either way, but my first like mediumship where I have communication with a spirit was with my own mother. Um, this story is very strong. I still get very emotional when I talk about it because it's it's always like no matter no matter how often I share this story, I've been sharing this story since I was nine years old. Okay, so it's been a long time. No matter how often I share it, it's that impactful, right? Where it just tugs on my emotional strings because it's such it was such a profound experience that brought my father to his knees you know what I'm saying because I woke up from this dream and I was telling him what he was trying to avoid telling me because he didn't want me to wake up I was already asleep at night he had just learned the news and here I am waking him up, telling him, he better tell me about my mother because I dreamt about her. And she told me goodbye. And to take care of my sister, blah, 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 and all the stuff in between. And he didn't fucking know what to do. And he just collapsed on the floor. And he started crying hysterically. And then he he told me in his way, right? Um, So see like but it didn't dawn on me that this was the start of my mediumship it took becoming certified <laughs> in mediumship right and and, and and seance conducting and all this kind of stuff for me to really tie it all together and say wow this has been something that and, and that has been happening for me to me, through me, for such a long time, right? So, um, what is the whole point of that? Right, so, um, dream journaling. <laughs> so, um, so when I was about in junior high school, my dad, it, it must have been, I don't know what hour it was, but it must have been not a flattering hour because it must have been super early because I ended up falling back asleep. So I guess we didn't have to wake up yet or it could have been late, late, late at night. But I woke up from a dream and I was, dad, 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 like calling him over. And that's when he made the suggestion. He was like, um, why don't you sleep with a paper and pen by the side of your bed? And instead of waking everybody up, <laughs> why don't you just write them down and then you can share it with us later you know and I was like bet like yeah I can do that and so I used to keep it just paper and a pen and before it became books right before it became in a notebook it was just paper and pen on the side of on the side on the floor right next to me and I would be scribbling stuff and it I would wake up and I'm like oh my gosh it's like so sloppy and stuff like that but like you get better at it, and the more you you build this habit, this you'll be so impressed with how much documentation you gather over the years. I had lost, um, not so much loss, but I was traumatized by an experience that caused me to stop doing that for a while, and I'm so thankful to be doing it again. Just period, because, um. It's such a great thing to do. You know what I mean? I'm not telling you what to do. Do whatever the fudge you want to do. But it is such a great thing to do. And to be able to read back and reflect and really analyze 
and also see, especially if you're intuitive, psychic, medium, or whatever the case may be, all the messages that come through your dream, right? Dreams are very important for me. And so the messages that come through my dream, yo, they be, they, they might be, it might be like dramatic or like, you know, in some kind of sequence that might not play out in that exact type of sequence here on earth, but the message is still the same. And the importance is just as fucking as as much needed and 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 divine. You know what I mean? And and it's revelation every fucking single time. You know what I'm saying? And so I just think that's important. Um. So either way, um, this right bears. They symbolize like protection. They symbolize um, courage in the face of fear. <laughs> so I just felt like that even in the face of fear, you have to be courageous. But like the big message here was to know that, especially if you're tapped and turned on to many things, you can finally protect it in ways that go beyond explanation. You just are. Right? And you might have a connection with animals too in such a divine way that you may telepathically communicate or receive messages in some kind of way or work with them in many kinds of ways. Animals are drawn to you in every kind of way, no matter the species, right? The species. Um, I need to get tissue because I'm very emotional. Um, I'm just very tapped in and very turned on, tuned in to all of this. And so um, I thank you all for being patient with me, okay, as I, as I deliver what I feel called upon to deliver okay so i'll be right back okay i'm back <laughs> right so either way i just feel like i don't know what we're talking about <laughs> yeah. we're talking about the bear we talk about dream journaling I'm just being tapped in, turned on, tuned in. Okay. And being courageous. Being so courageous at this time to really know that your guides, your ancestors, your God has your back. And so there might be stuff that you might need the courage to come out and say, do, explore. And maybe you feel alone in this process. Or maybe you feel like you might be attacked. Okay? Or maybe you are experiencing spiritual warfare to some degree. Right? We're all we all are, honestly. Nobody's exempt from that, whether you associate it with that, whether you acknowledge it as that. Um, we all have our battles. Whether we see them or not, how conscious we be, and all that kind of stuff, everybody's journey is different. But it doesn't mean that people are exempt from having to evolve and learn. Whether they evolve and learn, that's a different story, but nobody's exempt from this level of, of experience, this opportunity of an experience to really go past the discomfort in ways that, you know, everything in our lives is like a lunar phase, right? Um, and we need to learn to make necessary adjustments. And I feel like Gemini and energy is our excellent teachers 
in this development, right? Because it does bring a sense of this clarity. It's sharp clarity and it might be frosty, right? Let, do you ever witness a Gemini deliver a certain type of truth? It, it can be cold, appearing cold in the way that they deliver it, right? Because it's an air quality. It's like, trigger, right? Um, you're triggered by it. You could be triggered by the delivery of the message, but it don't change the message, right? Sometimes things are not, they, they can't be delivered as pretty as we want them to be, right? Sometimes it needs to be a little cool, cool, calm, collected, sharp, sharp. So your sharpness, right, is 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 finer tuning, right? So it can appear like your sass meter is through the roof, but it's just the sharpness. It's a sharpness to our thoughts, right? A sharpness to our thoughts, providing the clarity that we need to be able to assess in our own lives, right? With such clarity to make the necessary adjustments that are needed in order to achieve the level up of success that we seek and know that we can have in all things that we do. So there's a roar in you, right? There's a roar. There's something, there's something here, right? That you need to claw at gnaw at, speak on, do, accomplish, achieve, finish, start, those type of things, right? And in and, and, and this Gemini in water, right? Air, right? This influence during this frost full moon, it, it, it encourages us to engage in this open and honest communication, no matter how it sounds. So there's a lot of things coming out, right? A lot of angels are speaking. A lot of earth angels are speaking, right? The roar is loud. And mama bear is coming out like, who's trying to touch my kid, my child, my cub? I will rip their head off. And so I feel like that could be scary. Even if you see it yourself. Because while everybody in the dream too, going back to the dream sequence, when she started running towards the bear, the bear went to go to attack her because it felt threatened. Because although she was being prey, and I tried to lock in, to the bear and I stood still mind you the bear was like let's say I'm right here the bear is right here she was over here and she ran over here like trying to go behind a car right but like running towards it like a lunatic like so the bear was like huh like I was calm here you are my baby's over here and then there was people over here and they stood daddle and I stood standing there no fear in my heart, although it was a scary situation. And I feel like, I feel like that's the message, right? It could be a scary situation, but have no fear. Mama Bear is here, right? And so I feel like that's significant, right? So, so engage, be open, communicate. It's time, it's time to express. It's time to express yourself authentically. Share your thoughts, share your ideas. First with yourself if you must, right? Meet with yourself always. But communicate, reach out, build a community. Even if you feel rejected by one, right? It's, it's a lot to put yourself out there. It's scary to put yourself out there, especially when you're an introvert, right? I have, I'm an ambivert. I'm both introverted, extroverted, but I'm much more, I resonate with introvertedness, right? So you might be an introvert. You might be an ambivert. You might be an extrovert. 
But to put yourself out there, no, is it is scary for us all. But you got things to say, things to do, things to accomplish. And that could be scary, right? Without projecting, without blaming, without victimizing. Just speaking, sharing, building, right? We can build stronger connections with others and deepen our understanding of ourselves and those around us. We need people as much as we might isolate ourselves or want to or feel like we need to. Yeah, sometimes we need to pull back in order to discern. But do we ever learn? Right? Because that's how we earn. So embrace this change in adaptability, right? Gemini is a mutable sign. And, it, and, and, and as nature, right, encourages us to be flexible with the changing seasons and stuff, we are asked to be open-minded, right? As we navigate, as we navigate these transitions that are challenges too, but we handle them with grace. Knowing that we're tapped in, turned on, tuned in. Here, like, let no man stand before the devil in fear when God is near. Do you hear? Like, do you hear that? You know what I mean? Right? It's like reminding us that growth and transformation occur when we embrace, when we step into these new experiences and are taken out, outside of our comfort zones. Comfort zones. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Unleash your imagination. You can get curious about your psychic DNA, okay? Your intuition is uniquely yours, yet partially inherited or influenced by your cultural black background. A portion of your intuitive makeup may run through your distant bloodline. Ancestral mystical gifts are working for you now. These psychic roots reach far beyond people who birthed or raised you and the more and are more connected to your soul's DNA. Right? What's color skin? Nothing. We are souls having a human experience. Anybody lost in color war and wants to be all like my my race. My color, my skin is more significant than yours. They're just as lost as the lost man, woman, spitting stuff like that. Oh, I'm this, I'm that. My ancestors are all black. My ancestors are all white. My ancestors are all this. My my DNA, my... Anybody arguing that kind of stuff is motherfudging lost. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it confused. Because if we are souls having a human experience, what the fuck is skin color? An illusion for the delusional. You know what I'm saying? Let me see. Does it say more? Intuition is a highly prized gift of your soul and uniquely yours. Your sixth sense might also be informed by your family of origin or influenced by an adopted family or set of close friends. While your physical DNA and your mystical DNA are distinctly different, there can be an overlap. Consider your natural ethnicity. How specifically did that cultures traditionally teach and practice mysticism? What is your family's and extended families and chosen family's relationship with mysticism? Do you have a family member of blood relation who is highly intuitive? 
you might be the only one. You might have some that are, yeah, maybe a little bit so here and there. You might be the real only one. You know what I'm saying? Seriously. And it'll be your children, if you have any, that will carry this torch too in a different way than you. Just like the way you're different from those you've come from or been with, your children will be more different than you, but just as special. Right? So, so was one of your adopted parents, in-laws, or caregivers growing up very intuitive? This card indicates that something older than you and tethered to your particular sixth sense bloodline or adopted ancestry is opening up and activating more strongly now. Soul DNA and physical DNA may be commingling and integrating cultures, places, and mystical traditions that call to you. Whether you can trace a personal tie to them or not, this should be explored. Is there a part of the world your family comes from that you have always felt drawn to? Or maybe not. Maybe you don't come from there, but you felt drawn to it anyway. Research the mystical traditions and histories of this region. This could be a good time to get or consult a DNA test and become curious about how your physical DNA may have uniquely influenced your sixth sense. Families and friend groups we are adopted into can also greatly influence and activate our intuition. Our experiences do too. Consider who you know that might be part of your soul family. Ask your intuition for clues. Ponder what ancestral psychic powers might be supporting you right now. This can include spirit guides from the other side. Like many Americans, I have DNA ancestry from lots of places, yet I always partially credit my Irish, Scottish, Welsh, and Cherokee bloodlines for my extremely strong intuition. Every region and area of the globe has its own magic and exceptional mystical power. What ingredients make up your psychic soup? Also consider the psychic influence and heritage of possible past lives. If that concept resonates with you. Right? So either way, don't get lost in the color war because it'll just lead you astray. But do connect with your own ancestral, like they said, physical right? and soul bloodline that is metaphysical in every single type of way. Right? <laughs> Sorry. I gotta stretch my legs. <laughs> okay. Either way, I think that's it. I right, get curious about your psychic DNA and know that you are divinely lit, guided, and protected. Right? No weapons formed against you shall prosper. Right? Um, I know that that saying and that quote and that biblical reference um, is overly saturated right now. Everybody and their mother is saying it and they be the devil in disguise, right? <laughs> they say it and they're the devil. <laughs> you know what I mean? But either way, we're not going to get lost in that either, right? Let them say whatever they want. You need to know better, right? Some of you might be a Sagittarius or have Sagittarius in your chart. Right? Some of you could be 33 years old, 34 years old, 43 years old. That's like seven life path number seven, life path number six. You could have been born 1951. You could be 51 years old. You could have been um, at this for 15 years or so, too. You could be life path number six. Like we said, you could be a life path number one as well. Right? Um. So, either way, right? Um, we're stepping out of our comfort zone. Right, stepping out of our comfort zones, and that yeah. might seem scary. And maybe we need to be a little bit frosty about it. Right, we might need to be a little bit cold and indifferent, especially to the energies that we might feel attacked by or rejected by, or where once we needed validation from. And so now learning to tune that out, right, and tap into your resource your resource, right? Your spiritual wealth, right? Your spiritual wealth that influences you, that you are a part of, right? Um, because we have this opportunity for personal growth and self-discovery. It's always about personal growth, evolution, and self-discovery, right? So 
be encouraged, feel encouraged, be brave to explore your own belief system. They don't have to be like everybody else. Now I start like, you know, seeing the influence and the, the change, the transformation here where people are now talking about Eastern and Western astrology. When I started talking about Eastern and Western astrology, many years ago here on YouTube, nobody was talking about it. Trust me, I look. Everybody was either one or the other, right? It was either one or the other. Now you you see it and, and everybody's like, oh yeah, they talk about Western and Eastern um, astrology, right? That was scary for me back then because I even got hit up by people that were like, oh, that's just confusing and all this other kind of stuff. You, you can't follow both. You can't follow both. That's your view. That's your perception. That's your belief system. I can do whatever the fuck I want. You know what I'm saying? So it's like um, being yourself, knowing your own beliefs and standing 10 toes deep down in that structure in that form that you're molding, that you are creating, right? Expanding your knowledge, knowing it, seeking highest of truth, right? So this moon invites us to listen to our intuition, right? Trust our inner wisdom, right? And align ourselves with our most authentic of selves, right? And whatever shape, form, color that might be, right? So it's essential too right for us to practice practice self-reflection and introspection right but we got to take the time to do these kind of things we got to take the time to understand our own thoughts to understand our own dreams to understand our own writings to understand our own passions right to understand our own emotions to understand our own patterns right when we do all these kind of things we gain valuable insight into ourselves period just be like that like that's just what happens naturally it's progressive right it's like you can buy all your followers you can buy all your likes you can buy all this kind of stuff but you can't pop buy your growth your evolutionary growth that shit is progressive that is organic and that can only come from you you could buy clout but you can't buy evolution you know what i'm saying so your leveling of self-awareness allows you to make more and more conscious choices and create positive change in your own life. And that's what you want. To stand 10 toes deep down in your truth of truth, not fucking changing your truth every single second. You might change your, your lifestyle and you might evolve that and grow, but truth is truth. You know what I'm saying? So we're preparing. Let us embrace. Let us embrace. Let us embrace. Let us engage. Let us be open. Let us be honest. Let us communicate. Let us adapt to change with grace, dignity, integrity, integrity, oh. okay, as we embark, we embark on our journey of self-discovery, and by doing so, we can harness, we will harness this transformative power Right? During every celestial event, as we continue to create a life that is aligned in our most highest, of truest, of authentic purpose for ourselves, that is unique unto ourselves. As we gain clarity in our mind, body, heart, and soul, let us be inspired to embrace growth and change whole. Let us honor these sacred moments foretold 
and use it because we are a divine vessel that is being used as a conduit, right? We are the catalyst of personal and spiritual evolution, transformation, transmutation. You name it, we're on that elevation, revelation. And a lot of a lot of stars are going to be highlighted now that have been in the dark. A lot of stars are going to be highlighted now that have been in the dark. Those that have been counted out, cast to the side, who have been hidden by the greed of the evil lie, monsters that have seen the truest nature of these creatures sublime, they're going to be highlighted true at this time. There's truth. There's truth coming to the surface. And it's going to be like a shockwave. 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 And some people are going to hear it. Some people are going to speak about it more. Some people are going to be forced by the divine. And it's not a force that is scary or fearful. It's a force of courage that is like Mama Bear saying, go ahead, you can play out there. I got your back. Oh my gosh. Yes. You can play. Go play. You're not like everybody else. Go play. What does that mean? It's going to be something different for everybody. But go play. For what you're told. Go for that swim. Be brave. You are protected as you play because you don't play dirty like everybody else. That's why you can play. You can go play now. Go play. You are safe. We got you. And we got those by the gripe that play dirty. That want to fuck around and find out. We got them by the hook. And they're bringing them and they're pulling out their teeth one by one. You can play now. Some of you might be 38, then born 1983, be 32, be 23. Either way. I'm going to look up for you. May the veil of depression be lifted. Remove. 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 Rasa Dan, authenticity in action, co-creation, the music of connection. A swirl of energy connects two beings dancing in spontaneous flow, freed from the limitations of species, roles, and expectations. They move in timeless communication where thought becomes form and open hearts lead the dance what the gift here's where you'll put all the pieces together where new concepts and conventional methods fuse and expand creating unexpected possibilities authenticity in action draws on responsiveness assertiveness discernment physical collection mental and emotional agility fluidity of consciousness, imagination, nonverbal communication, subtle body awareness, intuition, 
consensual leadership and the paradox between boundaries and oneness. What? 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 The challenge. When two beings move in synchrony, 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 I don't know, a greater consciousness arises, right? That reminds me of that when two move, when, when two work on two is better than one. <laughs> I forgot the words, I believe. But anyway, a greater consciousness arises and with it, a feeling of ecstasy. Can you stay present and focused during these moments of intense joy? Can you accept the gift of expanded awareness without becoming addicted to it? If the next moment offers frustration, indecision, conflict, performance, anxiety, or miscommunication, can you dance with that too? The journey. The idea of the Rasa dance came from an unexpected challenge. Early on, I was surprised to find that some students who assess greater sensitivity, heart-based awareness, and intuition during a weekend workshop were virtually paralyzed when they returned home. Equestrians seemed to have the hardest time. They not only witnessed horses acting intelligently, these people experienced incidents where their four-legged facilitators taught profound lessons about life, love, and consciousness. You know, talking about, so I'm going to be, like I told you in the segment, speaking about animal experiences, whether it's um, in the metaphysical world or physical world. And my experience, my experience with horses started when I was young. I learned how to ride horses when I was a young girl in a very dramatic way, um, a very dramatic, traumatic way. Um, and in that dramatic, traumatic way, I'm so grateful for the experience because I got to ride horses, even though it was a fucked up situation. You know what I mean? Um, and about a month ago, I um, that was the last time I spent with horses, right? And it was funny because I met a horse, a stubborn horse. I called him stubborn because he refused to like acknowledge me, but was acknowledging me like telepathic, telepathically. And then it, we got into this whole conversation. It was this color was the color of the horse. Even though this is a, a female here, the color of the horse that I'm speaking of was this color, right? But either way, like I had this whole conversation in my mind with this horse that was stubborn. And then when I went to walk away, that's when it went <laughs> like, like I made that that noise. And I thought that that was spectacular from my experience at this time. Because just because you can commune doesn't mean that all communication will be smooth sailing. And it's just like humans, you know what I mean? Like, no matter how you communicate, you can communicate the best, you could be the best communicator, and not all communication with others will run smoothly, right? There'll be some stubborn energies um, and, and, and stuff like that. So, it's it's how you adapt and how you facilitate or it's how you navigate those tough waters and what lessons can you learn from these experiences that are really transformational if you allow them to be that anyways, let me go back to the earlier. This just made me think about that the, 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 my last encounter with horses. Okay. So um so all right, this is kind of long. I'm not gonna read all of that. All right, so so oh, this person teaches horse dancing, right? Ah, check it, check it, check it, Ebony. Ebony. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna go to where I write because this is pages in. I'm not gonna write. It says dancing with one horse over time increases coordination, familiarity, connection, and trust. Dancing with a variety of horses exercises adaptability and energy modulation. Each individual requires different levels of assertiveness and sensitivity. 
Different nonverbal interactions reveal different challenges, creating mistakes that lead to new moves and ultimately brief yet powerful exchanges with that mystical force connecting us all. I was actually teaching horse dancing at California's Equisitory Center when I came across a myth elucidating this profound yet elusive experience. My host, Lisa Walters, had been to India several years earlier, and her living room resting on the piano was a huge, beautifully illustrated book on Krishna. Imagine my surprise when leafing through the pages, I came to a chapter called Rasa Dance. The story involved India's version of the cowgirl, the gopis, a group of striking yet devoted young women who took care of the, earth, of the herds. One night under the light of the moon, the gopis pined for their god Krishna, with such fervor that he was compelled to descend into their circle. Each gopi thought she was dancing alone with her sapphire-colored beloved as he appeared to them simultaneously, aligning with their unique qualities of beauty and grace. As the gopis and Krishna moved together, a blissful musical sound was produced from the tinkling of their bells, ornaments, and bangles. Above this scene, other immortals flew back and forth, trying to catch a glimpse of the spectacle, singing and showering flowers on all the dancers. A sacred performance is still called a rasa dance, signifying a state of grace in which spirit engages with its many manifestations, expressing different aspects of infinity through the music of connection. Little did I know that a force would lead me to a deeper understanding and experience of this soulful cosmic dance. Right? So that's beautiful, right? And then here we got 23. And that's interesting, too, because for those of you that are tapped into a non-human, maybe you're connected to music, too. I love music. Music is another important part of my journey. And I, too, do mystical dance, right? And what I mean by that is getting lost in the music while it's playing and just moving and swaying your body in every kind of way that aligns with whatever it is that you are aligning to at that moment and it's like a, you're transcending space and time and if you close your eyes you get taken to this place this space that doesn't exist it's between all worlds but yet you're here but you're not you're ethereal you're 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 beyond this body and it can become trippy too right it's like the state of ecstasy right or the state of like have you ever taken um um, um, certain kind of things that cause these type of um, mind altering experiences. It can be a state of like satori too, right? A state of so it's like that. You don't need the mind altering things to get there. Although people take mind altering things to get there because they might struggle to get there without them. I'm not knocking anything. I've done many things, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, but I've also done it sober. Get what I'm saying? So it's possible, is what I'm saying, to get into these states of being without any kind of substance that will take you there because you're already there. You're this mystical being. You're having this human experience. And sometimes if you just allow the music to take you to the places and the spaces, that will connect you in a way that will transcend you outside of your body in every kind of way to dance with the divine. It's such a, 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 a profound experience that I recommend to everyone, right? To try to do, right? Turn off the light if you have to, close your eyes, become one with the rhythm, the beat, the flow, the drum. Mm. Let it take you there, right? Okay, 23. Mm. Mm, you want my attention, and that's why you keep doing that stuff. <laughs> okay. The herd. Authentic community. Consensual leadership, balancing individual and group needs. Running across the plain, a dark horse is captivated by sunlight, shining through an apparition in the cloud. 
Pausing briefly, he gathers confidence in his unique talent and wisdom, preparing to accept a leadership role when he rejoins the herd. The gift. When we trade leadership roles according to who's calmest, clearest, and most creative in a given situation, the entire community benefits. The challenge, consensual leadership is not a job description. It's an improvisation. To be confident in your own dreams and talents while remaining responsive to the needs and gifts of others, you must check your ego at the gate. The journey, right? The journey is usually long, so this tells like a whole story, but I'm going to just go to wherever I feel drawn to. Consensual leadership draws on the wisdom and sentience of the entire herd. It is, to a great extent, improvisational. Though I may be acknowledged as the official leader of my organization upon a quest worldwide, I'm still in business because I've gathered a group of people around me who can both lead and follow, who are knowledgeable yet willing to continue learning, whom I can trust to support me when I'm feeling vulnerable and who can admit when they're feeling unsure. When we're uncertain or triggered by what's happening, we look to the person who seems the calmest and most centered in that situation. Sometimes when we're undecided about which role to take, we look to the most confident, invested, or enthusiastic person. When there's conflict, we agree to consult outside experts, yet sometimes even then the path is not clear. In these cases, I may have to follow my gut, though I'm still dubious as to the exact right course of action. Mostly, however, we all have to acknowledge that we do not know the one true right way. That authentic community itself is a work in progress. Some students and employees find this disconcerting, even frightening. Some are comforted by how human we seem, but for over a decade, we really had no choice in the matter. Ultimately, we had a black Arabian stallion on the property who was absolutely intolerant of incongruity. While many of our horses were more subtle, supportive, and patient with our shortcomings, Merlin was always ready to challenge our egos if they got out of control. Merlin, Rasa, and Comet have since left us for the greener pastures of another world. But their children remain, and lessons in consensual leadership continue to unfold. Over the years, I've seen this next generation negotiate power in sometimes predictable, sometimes surprising new ways, as each individual brings forth nuances of talent, personality, interest, and enthusiasm that coverage and transform through the alchemy of her dynamics. I wouldn't have it any other way. So you take it like as you go in that. These are absolutely stunning, beautiful cards that I'm excited to explore and get to know some more, right? So that's good. Um, but I love that. I love how it was talking about this, like this Gemini and, um, energy, right? Of this full moon, right? Um, this full moon in Gemini, right? So I embrace, right, the transformative energy of the frost full moon, right, in Gemini, allowing it to guide me towards positive growth and change. I am open, right? I am open, I'm receptive, receptive. I'm receptive to the clarity and the sharpness of thought that this moon brings, right? My mind is clear and I see opportunities clearly. Right, I communicate right with confidence, right, and authenticity. Right, I'm um, expressing my thoughts and ideas with clarity and grace. I like that. I adapt easily to change and embrace new experiences with enthusiasm, knowing that there are opportunities for my own personal expansion. Right, um. I am flexible and open-minded, allowing myself to see multiple perspectives and make informed decisions, right? I trust my intuition to guide me in making choices that are aligned with my highest, highest, highest of good, right? I release all old patterns and beliefs that no longer serve me, making space for new possibilities and growth. 
despite what much of this term is, not even the five feet of school morning and any senior in the agenda morning. Where? Was the agenda morning? Where was he? Was there a tough thing to learn to win? Okay, I am adaptable. I am resilient, navigating transitions and challenges with grace and ease. All time. Okay, so, um, I embrace the power of curiosity, right? Um, seeking knowledge and understanding in all areas of my life. I release any fear of change and resistance, knowing that this is a necessary part of my own personal evolution. And I don't know if you can have a little chat in time on the screen. That will align beautifully if these messages are being gifted right now. Love, freedom, sing. Vega, freedom. All right, so 73 could have been born in 1973, could be 73 years old, could be 37 years old, you don't have to be, could be a life path number one, life path number seven, life path number three, you don't have to be. So this is Vega. The ancient vegans had many challenges in their personal development, including feelings of self-limitation, self-judgment, over-controlled emotions, and martyrhood, to name a few. This kept them feeling like slaves to their mental and emotional patterns for a millennia. But as they awakened, they realized that those patterns were just illusions that stopped them from seeing their inner light. Once they realized this, they experienced a tremendous, a tremendous sense of spiritual liberation and freedom. This is the same challenge humans have. Can you stop validating mental emotional patterns and simply be your light? This card refers to an era of vegan history in which the vegans had surmounted all of their spiritual challenges and became an awakened species. All civilizations have this opportunity, but often a planetary civilization has to go through several cycles of darkness and ignorance before it can become awakened. Earth is in a time of darkness right now, but it is always darkest before the dawn. Humanity has tremendous potential to become an awakened species as well, but the process is never easy. It requires individuals and the society as a whole to see themselves clearly and take the steps needed to transform ignorance into enlightenment. This card refers to the immense freedom and liberation that comes from spiritual insight and no longer being a slave to emotions, painful memories of the past, or fears about the future. It refers to a state of consciousness that is rooted in the now, where all your energy that was once spent in worry, fear, judgment, and self-sabotage is reclaimed. If this card shows up in your reading, then it usually means that you are on the precipice of major change, an opportunity to free yourself from old destructive patterns that have kept you stuck. In order to express this energy in the physical reality, however, you will need to take all the steps needed in your life to claim your freedom. Know that these steps may be painful, but the liberation that comes is like a rebirth. As each person takes these steps to transform his or her life, the entire planet consciousness can evolve as well. Have no fear. The energy of the ancient vegan masters support you here on your journey. I love that. Let's pull one more from the stuff.
he had been born 1995, he could be 59 years old, he could be born 1965, he could be 65 years old, he could be a life path number five, he could be a life path number six. You don't have to be six, nine, you could be a life path number one, a life path number four, or a life path number five, right? Way showing. Serious, the future, okay? In the ancient past, Syrians were conflicted about being leaders or staying hidden. <laughs> oh my goodness. They saw this as either as an either or situation, right? And for many of that's what I was saying. Oh my gosh, this makes more sense now, right? In regards to when I said those that were kept hidden or not seen coming to the surface. You know what I mean? Being acknowledged in such a way that they step up to the role of leader in every kind of way because now is the time for them to come on board and lead. So this could be like the Sigma power energies, right? Silencing the war wars because they have true mastery. Wow, okay. They saw this as e an either or situation. Now that they have evolved, they realize that being a leader is not an aggressive or controlling role. True leaders lead from the heart, without ego's desire, and from a clear sense of inner direction that is aligned with universal consciousness. In the ancient past, you were also conflicted about this issue, but now is the time to release this karmic pattern and no longer have fear of being a leader or a way shower. You don't have to do anything to lead. Simply being is enough. This is an era of enlightenment, serious consciousness. To successfully evolve, Syrians had to heal some of their deepest, deepest fears. And I feel like this bear, I just feel like this whole entire message is so wonderful. An evolutionary alignment. And for those of you tapped and turned on, tuned in, I hope you really feel the gift that this message is on a whole level. Thank you for being here. Okay, the bear. You're divinely lit, guided, and protected. You can go play now. You can go play. You can go lead the way and play for you are safe. Okay? Syrians had to heal some of their deepest fears. One of these fears was about leadership and its responsibilities. They resisted this role but soon realized that it was part of their spiritual path. They eventually accepted it with gratitude for being allowed to be of service. If you pull this card, it most likely means that you have leadership qualities. It may be asked of you to use those qualities now. Recognize that being a leader or teacher can be subtle. It may be as a leader or a teacher in your family. It may be as a leader or a teacher in your family or in your community. Do not fear this ability within you. But at the same time, do not force it to manifest. The best leaders are those who don't necessarily want to lead, but simply lead by example. Another possible meaning is that you might be attached to the idea of becoming a leader. And this desire is coming from ego rather than your true self. And you'll see that too, like with the spiritual narcissists out there, right? Like they want to be this guru. They want to be this leader. They want to be... They want to be known, they want to be revered, they want to be worshipped, they want to be identified and seen as the way shower, you know? A lot of false prophets out there, you know what I'm saying? Right, so be careful, be discerning. It's usually those that don't want to do it that should, you know what I mean? The best leaders are those who don't necessarily want to lead, but simply lead by example. 
Another possible meaning is that you might be attached to the idea of becoming a leader, and this desire is coming from ego rather than your true self. In order to know which, if any, of these options is the correct interpretation, you'll know, right? Go honestly within yourself to find the answer. The card may also be referencing a lifetime in which you were a leader. Use your intuition and look at the other cards in your life circumstances for further clarity. The simplified message, every being is a leader and teacher for others. Each one reach one, teach one, some of my favorite quotes, right? And as we all embrace this role, we also have to embrace the responsibilities that come with that role. Integrity, impeccability, responsibility, and authenticity. And you'll be able to see that too. There's a lot of people that don't know their identity. They're still searching for it. How can they lead? If every day they're switching up their new personality, their new role, they, they, they're they morphing into to other people. Taking like, you know, have to watch other people in order to become who they think they want to be or want to be. Right? So use your discernment, please be able to tell the difference between authentic and people with integrity. We're going to do a little mini um, advice for every zodiac sign. Um, I'll go through the signs. I'm gonna pull one card, and that's it. So it's gonna be short, sweet. Take with it as you will. Know that we are more than one sign. So you can look at this as your sun, moon, rising, Venus, if you want, south node, north node, all the important aspects and planets in your in your chart. You can go check out each and every message that aligns with you that you feel called to check out. So don't check out just one sign, check out multiples that resonate with you, dependent upon your astrological configurations, okay? So we're gonna begin with Aries, whether it's sun, moon, rising, Venus, however you wanna see that, okay? So Aries, it's time, you know, to embrace the power of your own communication, right? Um, express yourself with clarity, right, and confidence, right, engage in meaningful, honest conversations that can deepen your connections with others, and you are, that's it, right now, Cultivate energy awareness, okay? Improving your intuition requires understanding energy, its power and its proximity, its nuances and its importance. Notice energy, your own, the energy of other individuals and groups, the energy of situations and opportunity, the energy of physical spaces and the fluctuations in world energy. Name and describe the types of energy that you encounter. Okay, that is your advice. I want to do that. Thank you, Ken. It doesn't matter. Okay. Taurus. All right, Taurus. Open yourself up. Open yourself up to new ideas and new experiences. Right, because this new this the full moon is encouraging you to be flexible, to be more flexible and adaptable. Right, so embrace change and trust in the process of your own growth. Right, connecting to your highest of selves. Right, so your higher self is concerned with the highest good and communicates through intuitive insights. Before taking action, ask yourself whether you're listening to your smaller self or your higher self. 
Your smaller self might impulsively lead you down one path while your highest self has access to a better roadmap. All right? Gemini. Gemini, this is your time to shine, right? Um, use your natural gifts of communication and curiosity, right? To explore new opportunities, right? And make meaningful connections. Trust your intuition and let it guide you towards your most highest potential. <laughs> right? Quiet your mind. Right? There's a direct correlation between quieting your mind and maximizing your intuition. Create more open space between your thoughts to experience your thoughts in general. A mind not distracted by mental chatter will more easily recognize claircognizant insights and intuitive guidance of all kinds. Make the mind a soft landing space for your soul, especially if you find yourself affected or, you know, by what's going on in this world. You know, um, quieting your mind might be essential right now for your evolution and growth, right? Hi, Cancer, right? So, Cancer, focus on self-care during this lunar cycle, right? This lunar phase. Um, take time to nurture yourself emotionally and spiritually, right? Engage in activities that bring you joy and provide you with a sense of inner peace, right? Cancer, develop healthy routines. Your mystical abilities flourish when your earthly life is orderly, practical, and predictable. Healthy daily, weekly, monthly, and seasonal routines calm your sensitive nervous system, making it easier to tune into your intuition. With healthy eating, exercising, resting, playing, spiritual relationship, and work routines, it can lean you into, can you lean into, update, or adjust to support your own six, six cents, right? All right. Hi, Leo. Okay. Leo, time for you to tap into your creative energy and express yourself even more freely, right? So use this moon phase to showcase your talents and your passions and your skills, right? Let your light shine and inspire those around you, right? charge a spirit animal so maybe you feel connected to spirit animals too an animal in nature embodies traits you might emulate now notice a specific animal or its likeness crossing your path in a meaningful way charge the spirit animal by acknowledging its importance to you then wait for the animal or its likeness to appear at significant moments as intuitive as intuitive guidance from a higher power I love that. Oh, 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 sorry, it's very late, I'm tired. Virgo, hi. This moon phase encourages you to find balance between work and play, right? And your truth to be spoken in some kind of way. So take a step back and reassess your own priorities. Seek harmony in every aspect of your life and trust in the process of finding, of finding your cl clarity and direction. Trust the process, even if it takes some time, right? Develop healthy routines. If it's just like cancer, you might actually have cancer in your chart. You may or may not, it doesn't matter. Your mystical abilities flourish when your earthly life is orderly, practical, and predictable. Healthy daily, weekly, monthly, and seasonal routine Calm your sensitive nervous system, making it easier to tune into your intuition, which healthy eating, exercising, resting, playing, spiritual relationship, and work routines can, can you lean into, update, or adjust to support your sixth sense. So making more time for these divining moments within yourself, right? Hello, Libra. How are you? Something with music, something with music. But either way, 
embrace your diplomatic nature and use your skills of fairness and compromise during this moon phase, right? Seek harmony in your relationships within yourself too and create a peaceful environment, right? For yourself and others. Receive love from the other side. Some of these could be tapping into your mediumship abilities or seeing a medium, right? Because there are messages that are percolating or coming to you or want to be want to come to you right um, loved ones who pass on are eager to connect with you through synchronicities dreams music and nature you may also feel their spirit as an energy shift physical sensation or wave of strong emotion Certain loved ones now act as spiritual guardians, sending you wisdom and blessings. Love never dies, right? Hold on one second. I just remembered something. <laughs> I just remembered something that I just had to get up and go check. Like, because sometimes, right, especially with this pre-Mercury shadowy phase, we might overbook ourselves or overlook certain dates and times and schedule ourselves in ways that is like wait a minute I got so much shit going on today so I just had a like a moment of clarity about an upcoming date that I just realized I, I, I scheduled a lot on and I just had to check the times and make sure that none of them overlap so don't forget me on that but either way that was like TMI 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 I was just like oh fudge like wait a minute <laughs> who are we up to oh, i just finished libra all right so scorpio hi scorpio okay so here we are so this is a powerful time for you scorpio right for self-reflection and massive quantum transformation right so dive deep into your emotions we know how deep they are and embrace the opportunity for personal growth, for personal healing, for personal transformation, and release any limiting beliefs, and embrace your truest power, and know that you can do this, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, so... Notice musical messages too, so you might be getting messages through music, um, which is cool, right? So you might work with music well, music might speak to you, you might write music, you might sing music, you might like to sing music, you might like to write music, you might be connected to music, you might turn on the radio and hear a line in the song and that's a message for you too, right? So of all time songs playing randomly, when you walk into a room, browse in a store or turn on the radio may not be random. Hearing a tune that holds special meaning for you or that reminds you of a departed loved one is synchronistic intuitive guidance. Spirit conducts your sixth sense symphony. All right, I like that for you. All right, hi, Sagittarius. Hello. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. It's your birthday. All right, so it's time to expand your horizons, right, and seek knowledge during this moon phase. Engage in many learning experiences as you always do, right? That inspire you, that push you out of your comfort zone. You are being pushed out of your comfort zone at this time, okay? So embrace the newest perspectives and be open to this transformational change, right? You are asked to lead in some kind of way. Right, cultivate energy awareness. Right, you might have Aries in your chart or be connected to Aries in some kind of way. But I think they have this one too. Improving your intuition requires understanding energy, its power, its proximity, its nuances, and its importance. Notice energy your own, the energy of other individuals and groups, the energy of situations and opportunities, the energy of physical spaces, and the fluctuations in world energy. Name and describe types of energy that you encounter. Get to know them better, okay? Beautiful. All right. Hello, Capricorn. How are you? 
All right, Capricorn, this moon phase encourages you to focus on your ambitions and goals. Like, what are you not, right? <laughs> but it's about setting clear intentions and taking practical steps towards achieving them, too. For those of you that be slack and lacking, although Capricorn in itself shouldn't be slack and lacking, but that's the shadow side, too. The Capricornian energy that be slack and lacking for those that prosper, prosper, but there's also those that slack and, and be lacking, right? So trust in your abilities and stay committed to your path and using both this heart and mind and passion fueled sentiment that exists within you, right? So Capricorn. Invite playful energy, right? Invite play. We got two cards, Capricorn. Learn about Clara audience, right? Take off some of the pressure with playful energy. Everything doesn't have to be so serious, right? Intuition does not thrive in a super stressed or super controlling atmosphere. Release, relax, and make room for fun. Humor, improvisation, and lighthearted creativity to boost your six sensory powers now. Invite your inner child out to play. Encourage playfulness in others. Learn about Clara audience, right? Hearing helpful words and full sentences in the rare psychic pathway. Right, um, you just hear things, you know things, you hear things in a different way, right? Um, spirit communicates in a different kind of way that you're being asked to listen for a little bit more. You know, a wise, gentle voice speaking in your head is different than an intuitive thought or your own inner dialogue. Don't experience, don't you don't experience part of audience. Listen to what others say, even lines from movies or or overheard in the grocery aisle, that may be divine guidance, right? So start paying attention, start writing that down, start taking notes, okay? Hi, Aquarius, how are you? All right, it's time for you to open yourself up to new connections and collaboration during this lunar phase, right? Embrace the power of teamwork and innovative ideas, right? And the power of even infusing love and friendship, right? And using your own unique perspective that can bring out about positive change, especially in your own social circles, right? The merging of certain something right here. The merge, the merge. <laughs> Create energy instead of mirroring, mirroring it. Humans mirror the energy they encounter in others or in the world. Instead of being reactive, generate energy proactively. What type of energy would you like to experience, right? Let it begin within you, right? Energy is infectious, so others may mirror back your healing energy. Mindfully expose yourself to the energies you wish to cultivate and also wish to embody, right? You might also um, play to the rhythm of societal norms. And meanwhile, you got something um, special within you that's different, that needs to come out, that needs to be expressed, that needs to be explored, you know? Hi, Pisces. How are you? So this moon encourages you to connect more, yes, with your intuition and spiritual side and your inner guidance from within your shrine, right? Engage in practices that nourish your soul and deepen your connection to that which is divine, right? Trust in your guidance at this time especially that comes from within. You can trust your own spirit, divine connection, dialogue that you experience at this time, right? Mm -hmm. It says acknowledge intuitive mastery, Pisces. Take pride in your intuitive skills. It's one thing to possess raw psychic talent or potential, but you've also displayed a willingness to practice, learn, and explore your intuitive gifts. Developing and trusting your sister is 
a lifetime's work, yet your current deficiency is worth celebrate, celebrating. Reward yourself and acknowledge every milestone. Hold on. All right, so, so that's what I have for you guys, okay? Um, remember, we are more than one sign. It's just fun to explore. Either way, um, you are an individual and unique, and so we shouldn't hold everything as absolute, you know what I mean? So let's use the power of this frost full moon in Gemini and use all its transformative energy um, and let, allow it to impact our, our our lives in unique ways. You know what I'm saying? So let's embrace these opportunities for growth, change, and connection um, and allow it to illuminate our path and empower ourselves um, on this wonderful journey of self-discovery. Next time, bye.